Hi, I'm Tony Nichols, and welcome to Chamber Chat. Hi, and welcome to Chamber Chat, a program put together by the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce for the sole purpose of keeping you informed on what's going on in your community and in your chamber. Joining us today is no stranger to the program, Dr. Memo Derricker, Director at Beacon. Welcome back to the program. My pleasure to be here. All right, what are you here to talk about this time, man? Well, uh, this now, that time of the year, we're going to talk about the economy and what's going to happen in our economy in the coming year. As you know, for the past 26 years, we have been hosting the uh, economic forecast for the chamber okay and uh, this year we have a completely different program so I'm here to talk about that okay well let's let's start out with the easy question what is the economic forecast well every year the the chamber invites a number of uh, knowledgeable people from the business community economists bankers to be able to look into the future of the economy and and provide some historical context, what yeah. happened in the past year, what's going to happen in the coming year, and some prognostications about what's likely to happen so that our members can make their plans for the coming year. And this is what the economic forecast is all about. And this is, we've been doing it 26 years, this is the 27th. This is the 27th you annual. You see that math I did? Yeah, now. very good, Tony. <laughs> You've actually spoken at a couple of these economic yes. forecasts and, and give some predictions about uh, the, stati the statistics that you had put together. Absolutely. Beacon co uh, continues to provide those statistics. In the past, we used to do it in the form of a presentation. Now we do it in the form of a handout. Uh, we do a okay. quarterly survey, and the mm -hmm. third quarter, uh, fourth quarter survey is announced uh, at, the, at the forecast with predictions for the first quarter of the coming year as well as the entirety of the year. We're going to do that again, but it's going to be again in the form of a handout rather than a presentation. Right. I understand there might be something different about this forecast than what we've had in the previous years. Oh, Tony, you're the <laughs> master of understatement. Uh, this forecast is, first of all, it's different from a simple chronological perspective. Mm -hmm. Historically, we've always done our forecasts in the third week of January. Mm -hmm. Uh, our membership has told us that's not a little bit late to provide a forecast for the coming year, sure. and they have been uh, asking us to pull it earlier and earlier. Gotcha. Uh, instead of pulling it earlier in the new year and interfere with people's travel plans, we decided to do, like most other forecasts around the country do, do it in December. Sure. So this year, for the first time, we are actually going to be talking about the next year rather than the We're going to be forecasting. Just, exactly. <laughs> it, it will be time-wise different. But the real difference is what happened on November 6th, the elections. Okay. Post-elections, there have been so many changes to the reality that the new normal is completely an unknown for us at the national level, right. at the state level, and at the local level. So when you're looking at the business and economic conditions of our region, our county, our city, we have to be cognizant of these changes. So this forecast has a very, very different theme compared to the previous forecast. This one we actually titled, The Elections Are Over, Now What? Now what? All right. And indeed, that's a very important yeah, question. There was, there was a lot of movement, um, some expected, some surprises. Correct. And so there, I would say that's uh, appropriately named because there's a, there's a lot of question marks, I think, in Absolutely. people's minds. Right and, and as you know, Tony, the, 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 the world of politics and public policy intersects very, very much with the world of business and economics. Right. Uh, it's all about resource allocation, how we deploy resources, mm -hmm. how we make use of those resources. And some of those resources are, are public resources. Sure. So when, when we are trying to find that happy medium between public investment and private investment to be mm -hmm. able to build the future of our region, we need to understand what the rules of the game are. We kind of knew those rules coming into the election. We knew there were going to be changes, but as you said, we didn't predict the magnitude of right. the changes. And, and now we really have a new normal, and we don't know the rules of the game. This chamber forecast this year is all about understanding the new rules of the game, understanding how we're going to deal with the new reality, and understanding how we should plan for that new reality so that we get the best of the change rather than be derailed by any part of the change. What can you tell us in terms of some of the topics that we might hear 
um, discussed at the forecast? Well, our, our theme is very, very appropriate and timely and unique to this particular forecast. Our format is, is somewhat similar to what we've done in the past. We will be bringing the senior economist of, of the Federal Reserve Bank from Richmond, the Baltimore uh, branch mm -hmm. senior economist, to tell us about what's happening in our world nas internationally, nationally, regionally right. and then at the state of Maryland level and finally at the local level. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a funnel approach coming from the very global to the very local uh, telling us what has been happening in the past year and what is likely to happen in the coming year. We are bringing another economist thanks to one of our sponsors MNT Bank mm -hmm. uh, who will be talking to us about what the markets are likely to do in the coming year and what has happened in the past and what is likely to happen in the future so that the finance and investment side of our decision making can be more appropriate based on this uh, post-election new reality, particularly at the federal level right. um, from, from that presenter's perspective. Following the two um, plenary speakers at the beginning, mm -hmm. we will take a break and then we'll go on to a panel format, again like we've done in the past sure. years. This year we have five major topics on the panel discussion. We're going to look at jobs, of course it's always very, very important mm -hmm. to look right. at jobs. We're going to look at technology, all the changes that are happening in technology. We're going to look at healthcare in the post-election environment. Who knows what's going to happen to the Affordable Care Act? Who knows right. what's going to happen to our community hospitals? Who knows what's going to happen with medical information technology changes? All those are very, very important questions. The fourth area we're going to look at is manufacturing. Our manufacturing had been showing some decline in, uh, in the past. In fact, it showed about a two-decade long decline. And just this past couple of years, we have been seeing a rejuvenation in manufacturing activity. Mm -hmm. The manufacturing uh, sector has been coming together, collaborating better than ever. And we knew that uh, this potential um, wind farm right. off the coast of Ocean City presented all kinds of opportunities for our manufacturing sector. Now the question is, will the changes that happened in Annapolis, will the changes that happened in Washington, will the changes that happened locally have an impact? Will it be delayed? Will it be in any way changed? Will the financing mechanism that's going to make that happen is a public investment. Will that public investment still be in place? These are very big questions and they change the, 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 the nature of the future in terms of planning for that manufacturing opportunity in our region. And uh, when we t put all these things together, look at technology, look at jobs, look at agriculture, of mm -hmm. course, one mm -hmm. of our most important sectors, um, manufacturing and, and healthcare, mm -hmm. you get a good picture of what the new normal is going to mean to each one of these areas. And there's a lot of intersection, a lot of sort of uh, crossing over boundaries between these jobs, for example, in the manufacturing side, one of their problems is having a skilled, trained and trainable workforce. Right. Well, if we have a continuing skill gap, I don't care what the opportunities are, we're not going to be able to exploit those opportunities unless our workforce is ready, willing and sure. able. That's right. Training that workforce takes resources. Historically, those are public resources. Again, will there be any changes to the availability and the nature of those public resources, or are we going to have to come up with private resources to be able to do that very advanced skill acquisitions, such as advanced welding for the potential offshore wind farm? Right. Uh, and not, not only are you wet welding, but you're welding at a height right. in the middle of the Over sea. Water. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a whole different ballgame. You need to train people about the different security requirements. All those things are unknowns, but we want to change those unknowns and uncertainties to more predictable outcomes through this forecast. It sounds like we need to have a two-day It does, doesn't forecast. it? It does, doesn't it? Because to, to know what we thought we knew prior to the election. Absolutely. And then to have the election results that we had, the, the what now aspect is, is certainly in play. Uh, not so much from uh, what to expect out of the people, but um, what kind of benefit will the shore see um, when historically we've um, had a, a strong seat at the table. Correct. Hopefully we can continue to have that seat exactly. at the table. I think that sounds like that's gonna t uh, going to dictate the answer to what now for all those categories. Oh, absolutely. And, and that, that's actually a very, very good segue to our keynote speaker, Newt Fowler, who's going to tell us what we need to do in this new normal. Mm -hmm. uh, Newt is a, is a renowned uh, blogger who writes about economics and economic development uh, throughout Maryland right. and he has a very different perspective. He, he uh, doesn't uh, 
believe in weaknesses. He doesn't right. believe in threats. He believes in strengths and opportunities. And he's going to challenge us to think sure. in a different way, to, to not only be ready, but ready to really thrive in this new normal. Right. And he's going to be the closing speaker of our forecast. And what I love about this year's change is we have married our economic forecast with our annual uh, Maryland Legislative Delegation Lunch. Okay. So the forecast is going to close, and then 15 minutes later, um, uh, we're going to start the legislative, Maryland Legislative Delegation Luncheon, where the entire legislative delegation has already confirmed their attendance. Oh, wow. They are going to be there ready, willing, and able to answer questions on the public policy side. To the audience that has now been primed about the economic changes, they are going to be able to ask these uh, mostly newly elected legislators what their vision is for the public policy side of this discussion. Can you imagine the attendance? Get your uh, tickets now. Absolutely. <laughs> it sounds like that's going to be standing room only. This, in my 26 years of attending these things, I only missed the first one, it's going to be probably the most impactful right. uh, economic forecast because of the conjecture we're in right now. It is going to be not only impactful, but it's going to be very useful, it's going to be very actionable, and it's going to give us the opportunity to actually hear it from the proverbial horse's mouth during the luncheon after having heard the economic piece, we're going to be able to say, hey, newly elected delegate, hey, newly elected senator, mm -hmm. how are you going to help us make this a reality? Sure. Tell us when and where. It's going to be uh, uh, in the Purdue School. In fact, right now we are at the Purdue School. Uh -huh. It's going to be in the uh, Bennett Auditorium of the Purdue School, the economic forecast, which is in our, just off our atrium, Purdue School, uh, Salisbury University campus. It is going to start uh, 7.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. and it's going to go... Um, until about uh, 12.30, uh -huh. and then we're going to take a short walk, or we will have shuttles available, depending on weather, okay. to take people over to the um, um, Guerrero University Center. Mm -hmm. The Wicomico Room of the Guerrero University Center is going to be the location for the uh, Maryland Legislative Delegation gotcha. uh, luncheon. So both events are going to be on campus uh, December 18th, starting at 7.30, and it will go on till about uh, 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon together with the economic forecast and the luncheon. Very good. Dr. Derricka, thank you for inviting us to the Purdue School and, and Beacon. Uh, I've been a strong supporter of the Chamber, and we look forward to working with you in the future. My pleasure always. Now we're going to give you a, a, an opportunity to take a look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Chamber Chat on PAC-14. Joining us now is Veronica Correa with the Personal Wellness Center. Thanks for joining us, Veronica. Well, thank you very much for having me. Before we get into what you really came to us to talk about, tell us what the Personal Wellness Center does. The Personal Wellness Center provides uh, counseling services, life coaching, and we have a variety of innovative approaches to help people create wellness and achieve the life that they want, achieve success. Okay. And one of the main things that we do is helping people lower their stress level. Well, th this day and time, there's, a, there's enough stress to go around. Absolutely. That's, that's for sure. So you're here to talk about life coaching for success. Yes. Tell us what that is. Life coaching is a journey that begins with looking inside you and finding your strengths, your abilities, your past successes and start envisioning the life that you would like to create. Mm -hmm. And it focuses on possibilities versus limitations. And as we're coming down to the end of the year, it's a perfect time to say how th th this year went for me and what I would like for next year. And start creating that and start manifesting a better year. So many times when you get to the end of a year, uh, whatever year, uh, many people tend to look back and, and see the things that didn't happen that they wanted to happen, rather than look forward. And to me, one of the keys in life is hope. Absolutely. Always having hope, a hope uh, that you could strive to, 
to, to be better, to be what you want to be, to have that vision cast in front of you that you're always working towards. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, th this while it should be uh, a very festive and happy time of the year, many times it's very stressful for people. So right. that's, uh, it, I think it's uh, timely that we're sitting here having this conversation. Uh, where do, it, if I want to have to create this perfect life, this life that, that I want to have, where do I begin? Well, you have to begin by creating a vision. What is it that I want to do with my life? Everybody has um, inside a sense of purpose and a sense of um, what I want to achieve while I'm here. And everybody has greatness inside them. It's not just in a few of us, it's in all of us. Mm -hmm. And we are here in this life journey to manifest it. Mm -hmm. So creating that vision and then starting to look at three areas of your life um, that you would like something better and sure. where you like improvements that will make you happier. And then start formulating goals with that. Mm -hmm. That will be the beginning. Do you have a formula for, for creating these goals? Is there a best practice that you found that you, that you walk people through to create these goals? Yes, and that can be defined in one word. It is SMART. The goals need to be SMART. Okay meaning that they have to be specific, they have to be measurable, mm -hmm. they have to be achievable, they have to be relevant to you and time sensitive. An example of that, for example, would be, I want to lose uh, 10 pounds. That would be more a wishful thinking and not a smart goal. Right. But if we turn that wishful thinking into a smart goal would be, I lose 10 pounds by March um, 31st, 2015. So it makes it very uh, specific that is a weight loss and how much is, um, is measurable. measurable. You can measure 10 pounds and is um, attainable because that means there's only three pounds, a little bit over three pounds per month. And then it's relevant to me. It can, um, it is important to my health. Right. And then it's time sensitive, a specific day when it will happen. People tend to write more wishful thinking, thoughts, ideas than a specific goal. I think we're on to another very relevant topic because how many people are going to be setting their New Year's resolutions? Absolutely, um, absolutely. So how, how can you make sure because, you know, nine out of ten doctors say don't set resolutions. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they don't say that. Um, but how can you make sure you attain your goals because so many times we set them and we get sidetracked or we, we don't see the progress that we want to see. What can we do to, to make sure we hit those goals? That's a great question. And you know, that can be summarized with one word again, is habits. I follow this author, Darren Hardy, um, from Success Magazine, and he says, if you want more out of life, you need to become more. And you do that through habits. And we live our daily lives one habit after another. Those are learned behaviors at an unconscious level that we just do every day, like driving, brushing your teeth. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to ask yourself, what habits do I want to embrace that are going to move me closer to my goal? Right. And what are going to be um, the habits that are going to move me away and get rid of those habits and embrace the habits that are going to get you closer. Sure. To give you an example, when I decided uh, and I had a goal of eating healthier was um, I had to let go of habits like buying things that had um, carbohydrates and sugars mm -hmm. and started moving that away from my diet little by little. This doesn't happen overnight, it's not, and people tend to think they make the resolutions for the new year and they want everything done by January 31st and it really doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that way. You have to look at goals a yearly or a three-year period and so I started to make the changes and nothing was huge at the beginning, but eventually it got better and better. I got into the habit, for example, of juicing. Right. And I never knew what that was, but I have found it to be delicious, nutritious, and it has made a huge difference in my life. Now, if you look at my pantry and my refrigerator, you're going to see that there's a lot of empty, empty space right. uh, because I only use things that are Good fresh. for me. Fresh, yes. So, right, for, first of all, now you're starting to pry. You're starting to, to get into people's lives yes. when you start talking about carbohydrates. I have to take wheat out of my diet 
you know, I have to start juicing, and I do many of these things. So that's it. That is that's wonderful. A, that is definitely a a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you do it, you feel a lot better. Absolutely. Um, and food tastes better. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I know I'm I'm. It's like I'm working for you now. But all those things, all the things that you're suggesting, or manifest in. You know, not only habits, but, but what you're putting in your body. Absolutely. And writing down your goals is another habit. I mean, people, I ask people, do you have goals? And they say, yes, of course I have goals. And I say, where are they? Because I want to see them and what, go over them with them. And they say, well, I have them right here. And I said, well, you know, your mind is a wonderful tool for logistics, for creativity, for ideas. It's not a good fighting system. You need to get into the habit of writing them down and then plan your day. That needs to be another habit. Plan my day, my week, my month, my year around those goals. That, that leads me to a, another good question. Balancing life around your goals, you know, because it, I look at the mind as as an airport mm -hmm. and the goals are, are these planes and ideas or planes flying around but many times those good ideas they don't land mm -hmm. the ones that you allow to land are the ones that focus on the person that you were not the person that you want to be so how do you how do you balance that in in the busy lifestyles that we have and, and attaining the goals that we set for ourselves you have to be flexible. You have to be very flexible once you set the goals. And I'm very pragmatic in my approach and practical, so I write them down. I specifically say what I want to do, how I'm going to get there, habits that I'm going to embrace, habits I'm going to let go. And once my plan is written and is ready to go, I um, surrender. I surrender that plan to something higher than me. Sure. I believe in God, and I believe that God is also guiding me. And life is telling me, Veronica, this is the path, not just what you think, but also this. So I meditate, I hear the inner, my, my own inner voice, and also the guidance that life gives me, that God gives me, into how get either what I want or something better. And the truth is that because I have been doing this year after year, the return on investment that I get right. for this process, it gets bigger and bigger every year. So listening to that inner um, guidance, along with what you set out to do. Life cannot help you and God cannot help you if you don't know what you want, if you right. have not defined what you want and who you want to become. Veronica, you've uh, brought us a lot of wisdom, a lot of things to think about today. Thank you for joining us on Chamber, on Chamber Chat. Thank you very much for having me, my pleasure. We'd like to give you another opportunity to take a look, look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Chamber Chat on PAC 14. Joining us now is Kathy Thomas, Director of Member Services with the Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back, Kathy. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. I guess the first thing we need to do is congratulate the Chamber. Uh, we have hit a milestone that it's been, I'm thinking, around 10 years or so. You're right. Since we've hit this 800 number mark. Yes, so congratulations. Sir. A lot Thank of hard you. work there. There was, but it's all on the... Uh, all on the chamber. Uh, it's not just one individual that makes that kind of growth. It's the members that make that kind All of right, growth. Well, I'll put you in the hot seat. What do you, <laughs> what do you uh, attribute the growth or the sustainability of the growth? Because a lot of times people join and you have a churn and, and, and it's just a, uh, a very frustrating cycle. What do you attribute the growth to that we are sustaining now? Well, you've pinned it right down. Um, a lot of chambers do have that cycle. They'll um, bring in a lot of members during a member drive and then lose them. Um, our chamber really has done a lot in the last couple of years to become more and more relevant mm -hmm. uh, with today's needs, uh, whether it's dealing with social media, whether it's dealing with advocacy. Um, they work very hard to meet the needs of members. And when you're doing things right, um, people want to be a part of that kind of an association. They see the benefit for their business 
in being part of a large group that moves in the direction they're trying to go. Wow, I like that answer. <laughs> well, it's I've fact. been part of that a little bit. Uh, there's been a lot of people that have done a lot of hard work, put in a lot of long hours. For um, a lot of years. It, right. it didn't happen overnight. This has been conversation point for probably three, four years heading in this easy, direction. Easy, easy, yep. easy. Yep. Well, I understand that there's a new way to, to join the chamber now. To, I think you, uh, you're, we're getting some traction there. It's, yes. uh, Pretty exciting, tell us about it. It is exciting, um, and actually it's a new old way. Uh, years ago we had an online application and through the course of time with changing our website and making things more accessible, we actually made our application less accessible. Mm -hmm. um, so within the last probably month and a half, we now have an online application. And it is fantastic. It's working with our database company. And it, it serves everybody because um, we have members in four different states wow. so if somebody's thinking about joining or is researching our area and says well I need to be a part of that organization how do I join they don't have to come in and see us they don't have to make a phone call if they don't want to um, they have an online application right there they can actually either invoice themselves or they can go ahead and join with a credit card right online mm -hmm. and the nice thing about the way it works is I then get notification whether they've already joined or whether they've invoiced themselves. And they're also told on that uh, response email that they will get a response within 24 hours. And they do. Wow. It's, it's okay. excellent. It's been a great tool. I'm real excited about Very it. Very good. I, it's almost like the, the, the last time we were doing online applications, it's almost like many other things and it, was, it wasn't time yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now with everything being digital, everything going to the web, people are much more comfortable with that process yeah. than they might have been exactly. previously. Well, it's a lot more interactive. Mm -hmm. um, we've been able to tailor it for our chamber. Um, in other words, we're able to ask if they want to offer a member-to-member -member discount or a, a benefit. We've been able to ask what they're in, interested in being involved in. Right. So we know going in part of what their interests are, which again adds to that relevance. It's, okay, what is, what is the company looking for and how can we best uh, provide that to them. Well, standing in the, that technological theme, um, what are some other things that um, are housed on the website that we have access to? Ooh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, around the same time, we um, shifted up our member directory. Okay. And this is a really exciting piece for me. I'm trying very hard to get all of our members um, involved in it. Um, you can go on our website and pull up our entire member directory. But if I've met Tony Nichols and I don't know that he works for BBSI, mm -hmm. how do I find him? Right. They actually have a representatives page um, and you get a basic listing with your membership. Um, I can find you through BBSI or I can find you through uh, Tony Nichols. Um, so if I've met you but I can't remember all about you, I can find it there. Wow. It can be upgraded. Um, anybody that goes to our website can find some very, very attractive listings. Um, and that's been really fun for me because I can take somebody's business card or their website and with a little bit of work I can make their directory listing match either their business card or um, their website. Okay, so I was, I was going to ask what, is, what does an upgraded listing mean? So yep. color, uh, logos, Logo. those kinds of yep. things. Business description. Gotcha. Um, it adds a map link not just the address, a map link. And um, through Sophia Smecker's work, our website is also now mobile friendly. So when they find all of that on their phone, they can hit it and call directly to you. Oh, wow. it's, it's really, it's getting interactive. Um, you can make your listing pop. So if you go under um, employment agencies or under insurance or under uh, physicians, you kind of want to stand out from everybody on that long list. Sure. Do you have to log in to see this? Is there a username uh, and password? Not for that. Okay. Um, there is a, a login and password for the member, like yourself, to upgrade their own information once, okay. once we've um, mm -hmm. talked about this and completed it. Um, everybody, every representative and every primary representative should have their login and password. Mm -hmm. It just gives them the ability to RSVP, uh, to find things on the web that are for members only. Right. 
So if members who are watching this don't have their password and login, all they have to do is call me and I can get it right to them. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I know when we moved to the website, the goal was to make it readily accessible as it relates to uh, events, mm -hmm. happenings at the chamber, happenings yeah. in the community. Yeah. Is that something we're seeing used more frequently or do we, do we need to invite people to, to take a look at that again? Um, yes and yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, it is being used more and our calendar actually changed at about the same time our directory did. Um, so we can uh, log on and look at all the calendar. The calendar is available to anybody who visits our website. There's also a community calendar um, which you'll find in the drop down box and folks that are not chamber members that have community events, whether it's a church event, a nonprofit event, um, a walk, a run, whatever it is, especially with the holidays coming up, craft fairs, right. um, they, can log, they can go onto our website and actually input the information to show up on our community calendar. Wow. Um, it does then go through uh, one of our staff members who That's has to approve it, yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then it just goes straight up onto the, onto the web. Really cool. All right, anything else you want to share with us as it relates to membership? Well, as you said, our membership is growing. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, I've been able to, in the last uh, year, meet a lot of new people in our area. Mm -hmm. um, I still stand strong that we are a large chamber. Uh, that gives us a large voice. But we have 62% of our membership is still nine employees or less. Right. So we still have a very strong base of our local folks. That's what the business community across the country is made up of, the small business. It is. And we welcome the large and the small because there's also a great integration when you can bring in a large company and the smaller companies then have, they're on a level platform and they have the ability to meet with and talk with these folks because they're all chamber members. Gotcha. That's cool. Thanks for joining us, Kathy. You're welcome anytime you want to come back. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's always fun to talk about membership. Yes, it is. We'd like to thank you as well for joining us on this edition of Chamber Chat. If you've missed any portion of this program or you'd like to view previous editions of Chamber Chat, we'd encourage you to log on to PAC14's website and use their on-demand function, or you can log on to the Chamber's website, SalisburyArea.com. That's about all the time we have for this edition of Chamber Chat. I'm Tony Nichols, your host, encouraging you to make a difference.